meeting this morning. Um, I wanted to just uh, just do a very short overview of you you know, a few moments, just to kind of let you know you where, where we are. I'll tell you what, let's, let's go quickly and I can be responsive to it. Um, as you know, Act 105, uh, the session laws of the last session of the legislature created this council. It had previously been an executive council. Now it's a matter of, now it's a creature of state statute. Right, we mirror the federal one. Yes, and we're mirroring the federal United States Interagency Council on Homelessness. Um, it's chaired by me, uh, and I have been appointed as the governor's coordinator on homelessness. And the act basically says that the governor's coordinator on homelessness shall serve as the chair. Mm -hmm. We are administratively housed within the Department of Human Services. Um, we held our first official meeting on September 10th, and then a second meeting on December 13th. We established quorum in both of those meetings. Um, and minutes were taken and approved at the first meeting, excuse me, at the second meeting of the first meeting. Um, our plan consists of, we, we're tasked basically with providing solutions to end homelessness, highlight the importance of ending homelessness across the state, and strengthening the continuity of our collaborative efforts to end homelessness across all the various state of Hawaii uh, executive branches. Um, we have adopted a plan to end homelessness, and that consists of four goals, 11 objectives, and 39 strategies. The plan to be adopted is consistent with the same plan that has been adopted by the United States Interagency Council on Homelessness. Did you ever provide that copy to me? Yes, actually, it's been in our, it's on our website, but I can certainly provide you with a copy now. Okay. Yeah, I was, we were checking it before the meeting. I'm glad I got a copy. Thank you. So that's basically the, if you look at our plan, it consists of, again, it's, it has been, uh, it was adopted at our, at our first meeting in September, and we're now in the process of drilling down on that plan. Um, as you look at the plan that I've handed to you, what you'll notice is that in blue, we've got the goals and the objectives and the strategies. The action steps are in black print, and we have yet um, And let me interrupt you with this number one. Sure. Part of the action right sure. Now. You know the legal definition of a homeless person? Yes. There is a legal definition. Yeah. Um, tell me. It's uh, over being homeless over six months, uh, and also uh, there's a number, a number requirement for how many episodes of homelessness a person has. No. That's not according to statute. Uh, you have that definition for homelessness? Can you please get that? Uh, we'll give it to him. Okay. The federal, you're asking for the federal definition? No, the state definition says homeless people are people who live in makeshift homes, emergency shelters, or traditional houses. Those are just defined according to where you live. And your, your number one action plan is to provide financial assistance and literacy to households with overdue utility payments. That is not according to the statute on who the homeless people are. That is not an action step that's been adopted. Okay, then if it's not, I'm grateful because I don't want that. None if of these the action money steps are for the homeless people, they are who we are serving. It's not people to be at risk for homelessness because that is not what the statute is all about. Okay, let me continue. Okay, so the, um, so we've adopted the plan, but we have yet to adopt the action steps. Okay. And that's, and that's the work that's ongoing now. Uh, we have... And let me tell you why. A lot of people in Hawaii are at risk for being homeless. And if we are to go that route, which is not the intention of this legislature, we won't have enough money to go around. There's a lot of people in Hawaii. All they need to do is lose one paycheck, and they're at the risk. Do we have money for them? No. Go ahead. Okay. So we have a, we've established a work plan, we have working groups uh, that are now beginning to flesh out what those action steps should be. Um, I wanted to say that uh, the action steps are to be accomplished over the next two years. Um, and we expect
expect that this planning work will take about three to four months to complete, beginning now. Okay. So within three to four months, we expect that we will have the action steps figured out, including the measures and the timelines. Um, and we're looking to do this in this fashion because we think that it would be more effective for us to commit ourselves to a specific set of action steps within a very, very uh, a narrow window of time. Because I think if we were to do this and say we're going to, we've got a 10 year plan, what usually happens with long term plans is that you lose touch with the end of the plan. It's better to much focus to focus your efforts on being able to do this activity in the short term. Make a commitment, a specific commitment, to action steps that need to be accomplished right. within the well, short term. Well, uh, I agree with you with that. I, I was um, looking at there. You're focusing on public housing <coughs> tenants. These people are not homeless. This is the interagency on homelessness. How can they? Be, how, how come we're focusing on public housing people? Now, where are you looking at? Uh, number five. Number five. Yeah. Yeah, and is that in the action steps? Number five, action, yeah. and then you go A. Yeah, that's Anything not. Any intervention with public housing tenants who miss one month rent. Where are we on this? Yeah. Is this the homeless interagency? Uh, you know what? I, I'm really upset. I think we should have a conversation right there. I apologize. Can we go to the next person, please? Uh, it's about the, uh, I think we should have this meeting because now my blood pressure is 200. It, it's not according to the definition of a homeless person, according to the statute, and it's definitely not according to the, the, uh, the intent of the legislature and this funding or this agency. I was one that signed this bill and approved this bill, and it's definitely not to my understanding that we're not worried about public housing because we have a director for public housing. Representative, you're reacting. I am to reacting. That so I said not that. approved and is not part of our plan. You are reacting. What I said was, was I provided you some of the things that came up in our community meetings and in our meetings. I provided that okay. in the interest of full disclosure. What you're reacting to is not decided by the council. All right. Okay. I the apologize. The only things I that are reacted that. that I think are in, in play right now are the things that are in blue. But the things in black, the action steps, have not been adopted by the council. Those are simply things that came forth when we had a series of community meetings across the state. And this is what people <coughs> talked about. It is the council's job to sift through all of these action steps okay. and to figure out which ones are the ones that they should take action upon uh, and which okay. ones should not. I think I made my statement on how I think it sure. should be. So I will not go through, will not talk about this. We will talk about it at a later time because I think it needs polishing according to the intent of the law and the intent of the appropriation according to the legislature. So we're not going to talk about this because it's just not technical. Okay. Representative Cabanella, I, and uh, I, I'm not sure if, uh, I'd like the record to reflect that you are a member of our council. I would, I would uh, welcome you to come to our meetings and to participate because these things that you're concerned about will be coming forward. I, in I our, thank in our you meetings. so much for that. And please let me know. I oh, okay, there, there's another piece that I wanted to talk with you. Well, what's your pleasure, uh, Representative? Would you like me to continue, or would you like to open the conversation up, or how would you like to? Uh, we're going to defer this because we're already upset, and I don't want to be you know, looked at by people. But I do want to go back to the previous agenda. I was told that you're going to be here. It's about the housing first. Are you the person that's going to talk about it? Lori, Lori, how Okay. Okay. Right, we'll talk Thank about you. I would also like to give to you, this is the Homeless Service Utilization Report. Okay. This, this was, um, that is the sum total of the Homeless Management Information System. It mm -hmm. is all the data that we collect um, over the course of this last year. And it is a set of data that is, we use that for decision making. It's getting better as we go along. All right. And uh, can you make sure that before Mr. Kiffin leaves that he gets a copy of the definition? I have. You have it. What homeless person? Okay. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I also have the 2011 data. You can look at these two sets together. Thank you. Good morning.
or how money was used for to rent? Okay, so um, I believe out of the IHS budget, um, more than 60 percent was allocated for RIT. Okay. The, the support services don't all come from IHS or from the Okay. They, Do we have a calculator? Can we give me a calculator? I want to see how much 450,000 divided by 30. Mm -hmm. <laughs> No, no, somebody says 15,000. That may be right. Uh, and is that for a year, six months? Um, it depends on when the time is in intake into the program. Oh, okay. okay. And so uh, the, the hope was, um, because the funding is limited to one year's time, uh -huh. so the hope was that as the clients were taken into the program, mm -hmm. their uh, needs address and they either become stabilized or um, um, received and, and, and receiving the services that they needed in order to become stabilized, and that they could possibly be transitioned to other programs that provide loving and housing such as shelter for care, um, and that they would be able to continue the program going. The, the, other, um, the other issue that has come up is that some of these folks have um, such degree of disability and need that they may often get referred to other programs such as a group home or The way the programs are well structured allows for a really good assessment of what each individual client needs and some pathways to get in the services it takes for folks so that we can get them stable and get them needed in the best place. For well, the, uh, one of the uh, the things that kind of traffic in the housing first is, is uh, it's claimed that if you house somebody that's chronically homeless, with, even without the services, the expensive services, they will, um, they will stabilize themselves. It's one of the factors of, that leads to being chronic. <coughs> the fact that you don't know when your dinner is going to come or where you're going to spend the night. That by giving them a place to stay, that would help a great deal. But we, we can eliminate about uh, a lot of those expensive services that uh, those providers here. And um, I think that the reason that I want to stress, because I believe when I already started this housing first, is that we house these chronically ill chronically ill as many as we can with the funds, and let them resolve their own issues. Not give them all these wraparound services where the money goes to service providers as supposed to go to rent. Okay. So I, I understand that you're saying that you understood that housing first was only about housing. And the primary mm -hmm. expenditure should be housing, rent. Mm -hmm. Not 40% goes to services. So what I want to explain is that um, not all of the money that's budgeted for housing first, or not even a um, big portion of it goes to services, because what the agencies do, representatives, is that they partner with the service with the service provision in the community. For example, if you take a, a person, I mean, let's say I was chronically homeless yeah. for 10 years, yeah. and um, I don't remember what it's like to live in Broadway anymore. Mm -hmm. And I have mental health issues, and um, I have a hard time sleeping with a, with a real roof over my head. Mm -hmm. um, they may put some people to talk me into moving into a home, but that's still going to be a frightening and unfamiliar place for me to be. So what they do is they, rather than necessarily pay for the service, they may refer me to um, a mental state mental health provider who can give me access to case management, who can give me access to therapy, uh -huh. which is not being paid for out of the grant itself, but is <coughs> part of what might, that person might be entitled to in room as services. And so it's not always that so in other words, the services come from the housing first fund, or it come from other funds? Most of the services paid for through other funds. Okay, so it, it's not coming from the some from the four hundred fifty thousand. Some of it may. Uh -huh. I'm not saying that it, some of it is not. I'm saying some of it may come from there. Yeah. But the bulk of the service costs 
is being born by others, by, by the other states. Right. The, the only thing that I'm focusing right now is the 450,000. That's okay. supposed to be for rent. And now if you have 30, that comes up to be 15,000. How much do you pay for rent for those people? The rent can be anywhere. Um, there's a range of rents that might be available to folks in the community, but the agency we're trying to make it rent that is reasonable for that person. For example, if I was on the street for 10 years and I don't have uh, social security disability yeah. income, they may get me stabilized and at the same no, time... No, no, what I'm saying is that are you getting apartments at $950 a month, $1,500 a month? That, that's what I'm trying to get. I think they're looking for apartments that are more reasonable than cost to what people can afford. And so what I would look at if I were the case manager yeah. is if I... If if I were to get social security disability and I got six or seven hundred dollars a month, mm -hmm. I would need to find an apartment that costs much less than that. And so that that is still safe and meets all the Yeah, but the the, the, uh, the way I understood it is that okay, if that certain individual, let's say, because uh, I know the homeless people get cash assistance also. Some it, of them. Yeah, yeah. Some of them get cash assistance, they have Medicaid if they get sick. So Supposing the rent is 950 and they can only afford 900, I, uh, 500, the housing first supposed to come and pay the 450. That's how I understood it. Is that the way it is? Um, it depends on what the what the rate is that they can get on a unit, but I think they're all shooting for rent that are more reasonable than 950. Uh huh. So uh, if it's a single person, then you don't get a three room unit instead of a one bedroom, for example. Right. Right. So I, I believe that the rent that they're looking at are much more moderate than the rent. Right, but the, I guess the point I'm trying to see here is that if that chronically homeless person can yeah. afford that apartment, who pays for it? Mm -hmm. the, uh, the housing trust program has paid for rent for folks that they cannot afford it, but okay. in the long term, yeah. they would look for something that's more reasonable because this project will only go for so long. Correct. I see. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that, that's the clarification that I'm trying to get. That, that if you pick up somebody under the bridge, that you know this program would at least pay for the first, you know, the, the deposit or the first month rent, so we can have a roof for them. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, now my other question is that um, how come we gave some of the money to U.S. vets when they have federal funds themselves? They do um, sort of. Uh, sort of um, IHS to get federal funds, but the two proposals, that those two proposals that were submitted were evaluated by a team, and um, so there's a recommendation that they could pay the fee. Okay. I, I think maybe, you know, uh, I should really look at um, what those, um, I did get some letters uh, complaints about who got those, but I, you know, that's not new to me. Mm -hmm. I know, you know, even in practice, when they don't get the contract fee, they, you know, uh, but I would like to see um, what those criteria for, uh, uh, that they look at for the contractors again. Uh, and just for my own education, so at least if I have issues in my mind, I, I can look at what it is. Uh, I'm not sure I understand. Are you looking at the criteria? You said the, the evaluation? The evaluation who okay. gets the contract. Okay. okay. All right. So how they were scored. In the right. Right. Because I, you know, um, I get emails and complaints about it. And, uh, you know, I, for all fairness to the people that put in the complaint, I, I just want to see that, you know, are those complaints legitimate or not? Or it's just like you can get it, so, you know. Sure, and what, what would you like, um, uh, would your staff be able to specifically in writing something to address your concerns to the state about what it is that you want as an evaluation process? No, no, I, you, you, no, no, you have a criteria, right? Yes. The, how you score them? Yes. It's just a criteria, honestly. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. I, I don't want to see the contractor that you score them on. Okay. So you just want the, the scoring criteria? Yeah. Okay.
the, uh, are you checking it? Oh, no, I, I think I, I got a message from Thomas saying that you had to go to a mental health task force thing, so she was unable to be here. Okay, okay, there was some information she put to Well, thank you very much, guys. Thank you, Charlie. Um, I did say that there was no public testimony. Yeah, yeah. Um, I did, so I want to stick to that. Yeah, but uh, if you uh, if you wish um, uh, to let my staff know, there's a uh, you know on, on meetings like this because uh, I may not be able to allow you to speak because that's already what's in here. But you know that doesn't mean you cannot speak to me after. Okay. That includes our information. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm. I was kind of hoping there were more uh, the mayor's office well, department. It's a normal carpet of floors, and it's not just fishing. We have 50 buildings here, and so instead of spending all this money, we can be more efficient and renovate some of these buildings so they're useful instead of looking, making the town look trash and unused. And it'd be much cheaper in something that's sustaining for a lifetime for many different people instead of just one family and then once they go, now we have to search for more property. That makes property. makes sense to me. You ought to run for something. Yeah, especially when <laughs> properties keep going up in price, let's control it by owning the building and not privatize. <laughs> Boy, I was hoping uh, to see the. They invited the directors of various uh, departments. <laughs> oh, now stealing people by. Yeah, my best friend and I have a Occupy. Can I take this? That's the best set of data we have right now. Yeah. Uh, and there's also the point in time uh, count. But that's more I've seen the point in time counts. Um. That's a be that's a better that's a better set of data in my opinion. So it's a good it's a good place to start. And there's a 2011 report too that you can compare that against. If you guys you want me to send it to you at your yeah yeah you can send it. I can, at my I can send it to you at your email. Yeah yeah for both reports right? Yeah yeah. 2011 and 2012. But if you need um, actual people that are on the street, uh, we can bring people to testify. If you, if you, uh, uh, I go down all the time in the neighborhood board meeting, uh, you know, and talk to the occupants. So, uh, and I'm also in the machine staff, but I'm a trustee. Yeah. 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 What about that Boeing airplane? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I work for I work for Boeing. Oh, I'm a submarine. Oh, okay. So can I get an extra? I'm gonna take I'm gonna take this. If you don't mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Actually, and that's, 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 the, that's the best set of comprehensive data, and that's done by the Center on the Family. Okay. You have, have you ever visited uh, homeless encampments and whatnot? There was some uh, mention of having some discussion about the uh, actual encampment cities and that sort of thing. Yeah, well, you're also Which invited to come down to Occupy as a two nut bombs thing on Sunday. Sunday. It's uh, three. Yeah. It starts about well, three thirty. Four probably four, four thirty more or less. Yeah. Six, you have like a potluck, and uh, you get to talk to people directly. It's a pretty good uh, way to get information. Yeah. I know I go to it. Doug goes to it. Okay. Well, I was hoping for uh, I was hoping for more people, uh, mayor's office, that kind of thing. Oh well. <laughs> that basically was a report by the uh, governor's uh, coordinator on uh, on uh, homelessness. Um, and none of the other directors, so I must have read something wrong. I thought they were invited to share some information. Yeah, there wasn't very much information shared. There wasn't much information shared. So. What was interesting is what they consider a homeless. Well, the definition six, of six homeless, months. yeah. yeah. It's and you have to be in a you have to be in a shelter to be considered homeless. 
Yeah. So that means everybody on the street is not really homeless. Not homeless. So then you can. Our definition of houseless is probably more correct because you can't be considered homeless based on state stature unless you've been on the street for at least six months. Right. And then how do they figure that out? I mean, do you register someplace? I'm I'm starting my homeless uh, period now, and like after six months. It's weird. It's really that, strange. That, that's a very strange thing, but it sounds like it's all being kicked to housing funds. Yeah. So instead of instead of actually helping the homeless on the street. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's skewed for devious reasons, yeah, you know, it, it, is what I suspect, because I'm a very yeah, suspicious person. Yeah, me too. And I, Especially I, when there's money flowing around saying, right. you know, help the homeless, and depending on how you define it. You should read this. this we have it, and I guess you can uh, yes, and, get um, that from the governor's office. I'm right, guessing. and it supposedly has all the facts and figures. A lot of tables, yeah, a, lot of a lot of point in time uh, data, population stuff yeah. that has been criticized because you had to, like, Kind of leave your name and right, and right, number right. And I mean, if we if we didn't have people actually request them, we didn't get those the, the whole doc, documents. They said they're going to email it to us. Um, when we get that, I will post. We will post it. Great. So, um, they got my email and they got my stuff. Just some data on it. I'm going to look at this. This looks interesting. It does. I, I'm, it does. I'm suspicious as hell. But right. I'm I am look too. at it with a, but, well, uh, we'll share notes. We'll Let we'll me know what you find. <laughs> and we will, we will, we will shake hands, and we will, we will get to the bottom. Of it. <laughs> Great. Thanks, Sam. Sam Mitchell. <laughs> oh, well, that's where we are now. Uh, didn't live up to my expectations, but I got a message from Rise PDX, Ahoy Gov is ignoring the people, what else is new? Well, what else is new? Thank you. Signing off for now. Interim uh, informational, not too much information at these informational briefings. Uh, legislature will begin January 16th. Join us on January 16th. There will be a march uh, and demonstration here covering uh, the need to abolish the PLDC, label GMOs, and a couple other things. We'll see you on the 16th, if not before. Thank you.